Okay, so a bunch of new stuff came from uh, Tormach today. I got two pallets uh, worth of stuff for both the mill and the lathe. Um, mainly going to go over the mill stuff right now, but uh, I'll do the I'll do the lathe stuff in another video. Basically, I got the turret and the uh, and the enclosure that you have to have with the turret uh, and a bunch of tooling. Uh, but for the mill um, stuff, we're going to go ahead and put on. I did get the uh, automatic tool changer, so I've got that ready to go. Um, got the light goes there. Uh, load meter, and the thing I haven't seen a YouTube video on outside of Tormach, so you know who knows. Uh, kind of cool, but um, is the Smart Cool system, and I got that with the new. I think they just added this to the website. The the setup to run air off of it. Um, the kind of interesting thing is it's got these three outputs on here and one of them runs the air setup. It's just a solenoid. It's, it's fairly simple but um, I was looking at a way to use uh, through different M codes to control maybe a second coolant pump or something to have, a, have different setups in within the code um, and they make a, a USB adapter I believe with relays and stuff that uh, that they sell for both the mill and the lathe that you can do that I think I've seen an NYC CNC video about doing that with the coolant system on the on the lathe um, but the interesting thing with this that I want to try out is to see whether having this box basically gives me two more outputs it just has a little headphone jack um, I guess it would be a mono a mono headphone jack uh, that plugs in and that's basically just where this gets its 12 volt signal I think it's 12 volt yeah uh, it gets its 12 volt signal to turn the air section on so you can run both flood coolant and air uh, or if you had a um, a mist system you could set that up that way too I don't know that the mist the mist would have a bigger would have a bigger shaft size here for this tube um, and for my initial looking at the directions you would probably have to machine out I think it's set up to hold the larger coolant line on one side and then the smaller air line like what they just sent on the other side but I mean when you got these machines you should be easily able to open that up and put a put a larger setup on there I don't know if there'd be any clearance issues or anything like that um, I also either I didn't read the website or I just wasn't looking but I don't need this bracket that, uh, that they sell with the smart cool it's a separate item um, I look at the directions and basically you don't need it if you have the tool changer I haven't gone back and looked at the website I don't think it's I mean it wasn't that expensive so not a big deal um, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing pulled out away from the wall and uh, go ahead and start putting on the tool changer they say it's a two-person job, but I've got a gantry hoist, so hopefully that'll help solve that. Okay, so I think that's uh, that's pretty slick. I mean, having having this pallet jack, I know you saw any of my videos where I bought these things. I, I try to get away from, from having that because I do have a, a tractor with forks on it, but having this pallet jack and being able to move these things around, I think really opens up what, uh, what you're able to do with these machines. Um, you know, I've got an idea, and I don't see any reason why it's not going to work, but for my, my plasma table project, I've got a 12-foot piece of tubing that, because of the way I'm building it, I need to tap holes every three inches, drill and tap holes in it every three inches going down um, over basically 24 feet. And I think that being able to move this thing out, I don't see any reason why I can't just clamp down this clamp down that piece of tubing and run it through and, and keep re-zeroing it. Um, you know, I think, I think being able to pull this out is really going to be a big, big addition. Um, it also helps to be able to get behind them to service and, and 
hell I even got tools behind there. I mean, obviously it'd be good to have this thing set where it was level and you're not moving it around. Um, and I am going to get to that point. I didn't put this together originally, so I don't know where it's at as far as shimming and everything. Um, so that is one of my projects, but I wanted to get all the weight that's going to be on it. You know, mainly these vices and the fixture table, uh, tool changer, um, on it before going down that line. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and try to modify the directions for the tool changer install um, because I do have my helping hand here. Um, they want you to take off this back, the back section. I don't think I need to do that. I think with a step stool I can lift this thing up and get it into position. I may be wrong about that, but seems like it saves a step having to unbolt that and. I mean, it should be sealed all the way around, so, you know, one more headache to try to avoid. Um, so, I'm going to get to work putting this, uh, trying to mount the tool changer to this thing, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so that worked out really well. I picked it up and was able to put it in there. It balanced pretty well, just picking it up from these two points. You know, you might be able to do it with an engine hoist with it way out. Um, you know, you could probably get it in there, you know, by yourself. It's kind of difficult. You would definitely have to take the sides off um, to kind of reach in there and get it. Um, but, but I think that worked really well. 
Um, I should have taken off this coolant line before I put that on there, but you know, whatever. Um, the one challenge I did have on the back, there's a mounting plate that the bottom two screws that that splash guard sort of gets in the way. I have a little goofy tool I can use to get into places and, and get the Phillips head out, so uh, I was able to get that get that out without any issue. Um, so now I'm basically just going to go ahead and put all the wiring components of it together so there's not going to be a whole lot to see. Uh, if I run across anything that I think would be a, a good tip or pointer or change the way it should go, um, change the way the directions say, I will, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a, once I get that done. Okay, so I've got everything all in and aligned. Um, I ended up using, they tell you to use a, a dowel um, I ended up just using an, an extension and a square that worked pretty well to get everything all aligned. Um, again, the hoist really kind of helped to get, I think even with a person it would be tough, well, that wouldn't be horrible, but have somebody lifting here to get everything just perfectly aligned versus with the hoist I could just kind of touch it and bump it and it, it kind of was carrying the weight so I could move it around um, and get that all set up. Um, I just went through and you had to align all the all the trays and, and adjust everything here, um, but I have got it working now. So the payoff is we can make it switch tools. Pretty fancy. Well, we've got a lot more additions to make, and I'll be making doing those in separate videos. Uh, we're going to put the spindle light on here. Uh, I've got the load meter. The main thing's going to be getting the um, smart cool set up with the automatic position. Where with the tool changer, um, if I go between this this bit here and say I switch to a drill. It's going to re-aim that coolant at the at the tool length for this tool. We had, you know, there's several inch difference between these two. Um, you can also make it make it uh, move around. You can set it to different heights within your program. So if you're doing production work um, where you're you know, you're really trying to fine tune a process. Uh, or, you know, if you, I, I assume once I get the hang of it, I'll be able to go in and make modifications. I know the, the post processor in, uh, in Fusion does now have some kind of um, understanding of the smart cool system, so I'm not, not really sure how that's going to work, but um, interested to see interested to see once I get that set up and, uh, and working. One quick note, I forgot that uh, I did have an error putting this thing together. The USB plug on the extra section that we added to the back, make sure that that pushes in until it clicks. I, you know, it's not a normal thing you'd see on a USB, but um, I thought I had it pushed in. You know, I've used USB cords before, but um, when I went to go set it up, that's the first thing they say is that if you, if you go to switch your settings in PathPilot, to the tool changer and it comes up with an error, you know, it comes up with an error that basically says that, you know, the USB cord, it can't find the tool changer. Um, so I had to take that panel off the back and I, you know, pushed on it hard enough that it clicked and that was the solution to the problem.